Hey everybody, Scott with Enduro America. Today I'm going to do a little video on something totally different. It's actually a boat. Uh, stay tuned. Alright, so I bought a boat. Yeah. This is a 2005 Trophy 1901 Bay Pro. And I bought this up in South Dakota as I was traveling towards Minnesota. I thought, gosh, it'd be nice. I was going to be up there for two weeks. I thought it'd be really nice to have a boat to take out on the water. Um, because we've got Lakeshore up in Minnesota that we have access to. So I thought, hmm, let's put this boat out there. But again, 2005 1901 Bay Pro. Um, pretty nice little setup. I got it from the guy. He had it for quite some time. Did a bunch of little things to it. And it needed a lot of updates and upgrades and all that good stuff. So we've got a newer Pro Kicker, 15 horse, little kicker motor on it. It's got the 150 horse Optimax Saltwater Edition, which is a direct fuel injected two stroke, which I was actually really happy about because those are really, really good motors. Um, we wired up all new speakers, amplifier, radio, the Humminbird deal got mounted in the dash. We've got the Tarova trolling motor with the iPilot link system so it's got the GPS built in and the transducer on the front of it as well but oh it's been a project I've been working on this for about two weeks just kind of like cutting things up and upgrading and I'll climb up in here and show you so we've done a lot of little things to it um, this top section of the dash was just riddled with holes so I thought well we bought some of this stuff for like 40 bucks off of Amazon and it doesn't look the best I'm not like a craftsman by any means but we cut this out and you can tell it's actually this this side could be cut a little bit farther here it's a little crooked it's actually a little crooked all over but it looks a thousand times better than it did the radio was mounted down here which i basically put this plate on there i had to have the plate remade so we remade the plate um, to cover up the holes that were here that they had the radio mounted with and um we put this up here. Basically what I was trying to accomplish is when you're sitting here at the helm, I didn't want all the crap sitting up here. So like this Humminbird screen was right here in your face. So you literally couldn't see out to the starboard side of the, of the boat at all. I mean, it was all, it was like burp, burp, burp. big thing here in your face. Um, put a new compass on. I remounted the eye troll system, which it's still not exactly where I would want it. I'd, I'd kind of like this off the dash because it's not really used that often either, but there were already some giant holes drilled through here. And again, there's there's still holes. This thing was just, it was unbelievable the amount of holes. So one day I'm going to come through and do the actual resin repairs to these and then, you know, paint it and all that good stuff. But eye troll is back up here. Everything's working there. Uh, we got the Solix 10 mounted in dash which was really really nice um, if you guys aren't familiar with these screens um, they really are incredible this thing will do it's got the, the mega down imaging um, the side imaging uh, it, you can hook up radar to it um, I mean it really has a little bit of everything um, a lot of guys are running this type of stuff like offshore as well um, but the issue with this too is I had the gentleman I bought the boat from had the radio mounted basically here and it was right in the center of the dash so I really didn't have many mounting options as far as what I wanted to do with this because my initial thought was I was going to have this this all the way down and then the radio or vice versa but the problem was is where that hole was it really I, I had to utilize the bottom of that to mount this screen and I had to push I, I couldn't push this up really any higher or go in any other direction, which it actually worked out pretty well, I think, um, for where it was. But my other issue was I had very, very minimal clearance for the radio to go in here. I'd actually ordered a, the new Fusion fancy, super, like super fancy Garmin radio, um, but couldn't get it down here. I didn't feel comfortable cutting another hole and then having the tolerances that close. So I thought, okay, what's my other option? So Garmin makes a, what's called a black box. And I'll show you guys that in a second. Um, but what it is is like, you have to create an NM or N, NVMe N, NMEA 2000 network. NM, NMEA, that's what it is. Uh, 2000 network. So you've got to buy these little T connectors 
you've got to have a 12 volt power source you have to have so many ohms of these resistors as uh, terminators on the ends of it it's kind of a weird deal it's not super complex once you actually like look at it and figure it out um, but I had to wire that in standalone from all this which I didn't know so I just did that like yesterday um, but I have since linked this is this is part of the black box that comes with it you get this little controller uh, which is nice because you can control the radio you know standalone from the screen as well but you can broadcast all of the functionality up onto the screen which is really really cool Um, so I've, I've gone ahead and done that. We put in the new Fusion Apollo amplifier, I believe it is. And don't judge, because this is not done yet. Like, we are far from done under the console. I've got to have a zip tie party. I've got to get this panel mounted. It is an absolute mess. So you can see back here, there's the little Fusion black box. Um, this is the amplifier. I had to make a bunch of my own custom cabling and everything. And then we've got the NOCO 3-bank, uh, 10-amp per bank charger for all of the lithium. So I've got a 24 volt system wired in series um, for the trolling motor under here. And then I've got just a standalone um, 12 volt that I wired in up to the distribution block deal here. So those can kind of go back and forth between the other battery. But I've got 420 amp hours of battery power, which is a little bit bonkers for a boat. A um, couple other little things to do that are on the list are the speaker cables. I've got, you can see they're zip tied all the way down the the deal here which it doesn't look terrible but it's kind of tacky I mean to have there's the antenna if you haven't figured out what to do with that yet either but I've got these speaker cables just going all the way down kind of the tower here um, I want to drill into this and try to get them down here and then it will loop down into here into the center console that's my next project the problem was is I tried to do it from up here I actually started in the center section here because you can take this out and you have access to this little port um, I ran a wire, I got the wire strung up here. I cannot get the speaker wires to go through this. And I don't know, I think, because I can't really even feel to like get in there. It's so tight, you're like just about to there, you can't really reach to feel. But I think the holes are so small here and down here in the center console um, that I'm going to have to take this entire tower off to be able to do it. So I need to figure that out down the road here. But otherwise, really, really happy with the boat. We've had it out a couple times now, no issues whatsoever. Um, I went through and completely serviced the little Mercury, which I'll probably do again coming up um, Just to make sure everything's good with this. You know, this is kind of a big investment You want to make sure that you're protecting that investment. So uh, trying to Trying to keep that going. I've got a different prop that I'm going to try. I bought a stainless prop that I got to put on here um, I don't know again, just lots of little projects. So four four brand new lithium batteries and all that good stuff this winter um, is going to be, I'm going to take all this little decal, this thin strip off, all the way along the whole entire boat, and all the other decals, and we're going to sand all of this green, sand it all down, and that's going to get repainted. And I'm not 100% sure on color yet. I might do something like this blue color of the Yeti. I might go more of like a, like a seafoamy, teal, you know, sort of color, tealy blue. Um, so we're undecided on that yet. I'm going to leave my wife up to that decision too because she's much better with design. But yeah, that's the boat, guys. If you like this sort of content, I'm going to have some more videos coming out that we're going to have this thing out on the lake hopefully pretty quick. Um, but if you like this sort of content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to try to be doing incorporating a little bit of this boat stuff in here too. I mean, we're kind of a recreation channel. I know it's called Enduro America. We were We were strictly motorcycles, but... It's kind of tough these days. You get a little older, and I've had so many injuries that I have a hard time just doing motorcycle stuff now. But uh, So this is coming up. I've got a video of the Ineos coming up pretty quick here, too. We're actually doing a pretty big off-road trip this weekend that we're going to be camping for four nights. But stay tuned for more boat stuff, and we will catch you then.